You can recognize this structure as having a lumen, some connective tissue or muscle surrounding it, and will look like even at this power to have a lot of lymphocytic infiltrates into the wall surrounding this lumen. The lumen has an epithelium, which is columnar. You can see it forms a rather papillary type of appearance. And really, at this point, there is really nothing else in the body that would normally look like this except for a fallopian tube. This could very easily be an isthmus or part of a fallopian tube because the lumen looks rather small. and uh, Or it could be a uh, infundibulum or a ampullary part. Uh, perhaps that has been made artifactually small because of the surrounding uh, inflammatory uh, reaction. Notice that within the smooth muscle, we see extensive infiltrates of lymphocytes, nice looking round uh, lymphocytes all over the place, some diffusely, and some looking like uh, perhaps primary uh, follicles like over here. If that had a germinal center, I would call it a secondary follicle or secondary lymphoid nodule, if you prefer. This is chronic salpingitis. Uh, and the even though there's a list of about five or six bacteria, which usually cause salpingitis, that could be the possible causes. Uh, probably 99% per, of world's uh, chronic or acute salpingitis would be caused by either Neisseria or Chlamydia, the two biggest causes of chronic salpingitis, both of which are sexually transmitted diseases. I like this case because it's, an, once again, a classic example of how you take a normal histology of an area or of an organ, you add in chronic inflammatory cells, and you have the diagnosis. Here's a cell, pinks, that if it didn't have all these lymphocytes, you would just call a normal fallopian tube. You throw in some chronic uh, inflammatory cells, you have your diagnosis, chronic cell pingitis. If these were primarily acute inflammatory cells or neutrophils, you could call it acute cell pingitis. Thank you very much.